Good evening ladies and gentlemen, this is Sagya Hamis again from Kimdi Group of Companies and as I promised you last time, I would bring back 10 cow structure that we're constructing when it's complete and ready for handover. Today I come here to bring you that structure now ready for handover. We have completed it, as you remember where I'm standing, we are under the cow's shed. There was no concrete here, the floors were not yet finished, we didn't have cubicles yet. So I'm glad to be back here to show you our completed 10 dairy cow structure that we are constructing in Bugema, which is now ready for handover. So, where I'm standing right now is what I showed you last time, our calves shed. And as I told you that is watching this video for the first time and did get to watch part one, when I said 10 cows shed, it's not just a shed that is going to house 10 cows, but rather it's a complex that comes with a shelter for the 10 cows, which also has two milking cubicles. It has a six cows shed attached to it. It has a spray crush, it has drinking troughs, it has a waste pit, and then it can also have an exercise yard if at all there is enough space on the side but then this particular one the exercise yard hasn't yet been demarcated because there's some cleaning up still going to be done what you're looking at here where i'm standing right now is the cow's shed as i said it has six sleeping cubicles which are slightly narrower than the ones for the adult cows for reasons I'm going to explain shortly. As I told you last time we would have a gradual slope which is basically for allowing urine and droppings from our animals naturally flow towards this trench here which allows our structure to keep dry easily so that in cases where we have driving grains, in case where you're cleaning, in case where the animals urinate, all that water flows towards this waste trench which directs the waste pit. Here this side is our feeding site for the <clears throat> for the calves which is yet to be finished it's just lacking partitioning in these feeding cubicles but of course they are going to be as narrow as the ones in the adult cows as you're going to see them and the reason is simple we want our calves to have some space to play because they are young they are playful so we want them to have some little space to walk around play unlike the adult space we are not going to make narrow cubicles rather just going to have division there and another division here and then they can feed at least two of them in the same space while when it comes to their sleeping cubicles we shall maintain the narrow cubicles which is essentially because we don't want them be able to turn or rotate in their cubicles that way they cannot defecate on whatever we are going to prepare for them to sleep on that way you know that all dung is going to be towards this side and that way it also lessens the need for the area to be cleaned while inside the shed you find that when they are feeding of course you have to clean this side because for it it's white but when it comes to their sleeping side, you only have to clean this part that's towards the trench. This is a door that closes our cows in and it comes in very handy, especially if you're going to have to isolate a few of them or you want to use this space to collect the animals for spraying. As I said, our shed is a complex that comes with a spray crush and right here is our spray crush. Our spray crush here has a ramp and also there is a ramp that goes into the cow's sheds. There is also a ramp that goes into the adult cow's shed to help the animals move smoothly from one level of the floor to another without any risks of accidents. Our spray crush. Of course, we have to put this guardrail so that our animals don't run out into the farm. So we put this to stop the animals from going over. But then also, it becomes tricky if at all this wide space is left open and you want to push these animals into spraying. They are not so comfortable with water so that is where you put all those doors so that when the animals are out of their shed you've locked them between here and now you can chase at least two of them into the spray crush at once and then you block the space using timber pieces here to lock them in there and now you can hand spray them from the outside around the spray crush what you're looking at this side now is our main entrance to the whole cattle shelter with perfectly working doors as you can see it's a double opening that way however big your animals are or if you need to carry food into here all that is possible without having to lift it over or anything now this right here is our adult shed as i said we have this ramp which is basically to allow your animals move from that higher floor level to this lower floor level without risks of breaking their legs or anything like that as i was saying earlier our sleeping cubicles for the animals the adult one and then the feeding cubicles for the animals you realize for this one we have this small partition you may be wondering why this partition doesn't go up to that side we are trying not to make this shed 
very, very, very congested or small. If an animal was sleeping there, it can easily move here or here. But if there is one here, then it can always move to the next one. But if we push it to up to here, then you only, you've only left this shed, this corridor here, which is quite narrow and limits the space of circulation for the animals. Again, our floors here can look that side. You'll notice that it's higher and this part is a bit low, make, giving our floor a small slope, which also goes back to the same reason as the one in the cow's shed. And that reason is that when our animals urinate from this side or urinate from that side, or we have driving grain into the shed, uh, that urine easily collects or whatever. If it's water that when you've been cleaning or it's rainwater, it doesn't get stagnant on the floor, but rather collects into our waste trench and then it can be directed to the waste pit. But also it makes it easy to clean if you're going to have dung and things like that. When you pour some water, then it flows naturally into the waste. Here we have plastic feeding troughs. Why plastic? Plastic because plastic doesn't get affected by rain, plastic doesn't get affected by sunshine, plastic doesn't rot. Rather, they are for giving our shed a longer lifespan. As I say, for the amount you're going to be charged to build this setup. You want to have a setup that is going to last at least 10 years without need for renovation unless you just choose to do away with it altogether but it will be standing. That is why we have very very solid metals that we have even painted so that they do not rust. You can look at our poles as I said last time. The poles are very very new. They are very strong. They have been treated with anti-termite that way they won't be eaten. They are in concrete so they won't be affected by water. You can see our timber is also fresh and good. On the sleeping side we add those iron sheets on the side that way driving winds and driving rains cannot go into the sleeping cubicle so you know that when your animals are resting at night they're actually comfortable there's no rain going to hit them they aren't going to be affected by strong winds which makes your animals comfortable but also in turn makes your structure last longer for those that have been able to count these are 10 sleeping cubicles 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 which is basically the 10 i've been telling you about but then they are not just the 10. We have these extra two here, which are our hand milking cubicles. When your animal is going to be milked, we bring it here. You have a, a way of fastening it into this cubicle and then you milk it from here. You don't have to milk it where the rest of the animal is feeding. And then this open space here is our water trough. This water trough is inbuilt. That way it makes it easy to drain, but it also makes it long lasting. And animals can, can't easily trip over or fall in, cannot also push it so that the water powers. So you know when the water is in there, your animals are not going to pour it. It's not easy to make it dirty. This trough has an outlet pipe on the lower side. You may not be able to see it, but it's there. So that when you need to clean it or when you put water and that water becomes dirty over time, you just open it from the outside, wash it up, and then that unwanted water now can flow out. And then lastly, if you see through the other side, our trench here that I've been telling you about is connected up to our waste pit. And there, all the urine that is collected from the animals goes in there if you're okay with having that dung collected in there it's no problem as long as it won't give you a headache removing but some people that find it hard to remove it from there you can always first collect that dung that dry one or at least the majority of it collect it on a heap and then the rest that needs to be scrubbed off is what flows in there and then eventually that can also be used as manure and can be taken to the garden we have these guardrails of course all around the structure and they basically just to have our animals limited into the shed without them crossing over and trespassing into the garden or whichever space that you need to be cut off from the animals. So this has been our 10 dairy cows shed. As I promised, you've seen it. The work is neat, the work is beautiful, and it's only been two weeks since the last video. So it is complete and ready for stocking. For you who want such a structure, you can always reach out to Kimdi and we can talk. It doesn't have to be a 10, 10 cows, it could be 20, it could be five, it could be three, whichever number you feel like you can handle and we shall provide this service to you or advise on how best you can achieve it. Thank you very much for watching us. Thank you for those that have subscribed. Those that are new, I always advise that you go watch other videos. There are those about goats, there are those about poultry, there are those about animal feed, which all are important for you who is going into this livestock farming business. Thank you. I remain Sagria Hamis. This has been our 10 dairy cow structure. Thank you for watching.